In this example, we're going to give an IV bolus of high-dose epinephrine in the presence of an IV infusion of propranolol. So remember that epinephrine is an agonist of alpha-1, alpha-2, beta-1, and beta-2 adrenoceptors with greater beta activity than alpha activity. But at this high dose, we will see both alpha and beta receptors having effects. Propranolol is a beta-1, beta-2 non-selective adrenoceptor antagonist. So now let's draw out the diastolic and the systolic and the mean arterial pressure and the heart rate. And so we're going to look at the effect of epinephrine when propranolol is on board. So propranolol is a beta-1, beta-2 receptor antagonist. So now both of these receptors are going to be blocked. And therefore, when we give epinephrine, it will only have an effect on the alpha-1 and alpha-2 receptors. So let's give epinephrine right here at the arrow. And then the effect of epinephrine via alpha-1 agonism on diastolic pressure will be to increase it. Okay, the effect of alpha-2 agonism is going to be to decrease the magnitude of sympathetic outflow. So this will kind of attenuate any response you see to alpha-1 mediated vasoconstriction because it will have kind of a counteracting effect to sympathetic activity. But the direction of the response is going to be the same. So don't worry about these minor variations in magnitude of responses due to alpha-2 effects. Just worry about the overall direction of the effects that you're going to see. Okay, now let's look at systolic pressure. Since the beta receptors are blocked, there's no effect of beta stimulation by epinephrine on the cardiac output, so the systolic pressure just increases in parallel to the diastolic pressure. So there is no increase in pulse pressure. It's the same as it was before administering the drug, and this is because there is no beta-1 effect. Now the mean arterial pressure is going to increase as well, and this is going to cause activation of the baroreceptor reflex. So this mean arterial pressure will activate the baroreceptor, which will decrease sympathetic outflow and increase parasympathetic outflow. And so the result of this is going to be to decrease the heart rate. So you'll see this decrease in heart rate as a result of this increased parasympathetic activity. The result of the decrease in sympathetic activity, again, they kind of modulate the magnitude of these systolic and diastolic curves, but it's not going to change the direction of them. Okay, so now what single drug could produce a response that looks like this? What we're looking for is something that is an alpha-1 and alpha-2 agonist. And the closest that we can come in the drug world is going to be phen um, phenylephrine. Phenylephrine is going to actually be an alpha-1 agonist. It's going to lack that alpha-2 agonism. So just remembering that the function of the alpha-2 agonism is to kind of tone down the magnitude of the sympathetic activity. In the absence of alpha-2 agonism, the sympathetic nervous system would not be experiencing that feedback inhibition. And so the magnitude of the response for phenylephrine would be greater than that of epinephrine when they're both being given in the presence of propranolol. But the overall shape would be the same. 